Hey everybody, it's Snoo back again. First video since Scourge League launched. We're about one week in, maybe more like 10 days in, and uh, I've been playing a lot. I got to actually take some time off work and have a proper league start for the first time in my life. Uh, this is the third league I've ever played, and uh, the actual league mechanic, pretty cool, uh, a lot different. Definitely not casual friendly. <laughs> unlike uh, ultimatum uh, or especially expedition was uh, this thing does not print currency unless you can handle a massively juiced super debuff map and then it's great I even I haven't really delved much deep into that so uh, but I'll be doing it pretty soon but I want to come to you with a, a video that kind of uh, talks about two separate things one um, Surprise, I'm not playing Burning Arrow Elementalist <laughs> this season. I actually did League start with uh, Toxic Rain. And I know there are a lot of people out there playing Toxic... I mean, there's tons of people playing Toxic Rain. Uh, Champion, or Raider, you know, or whatever. Uh, but especially... Um, how do you actually do these maps when you're still kind of gearing up? How do you go deep in the Scourge Realm and get like 100, 200, almost 300 stacks? And, you know, not just completely fold the map over? Uh, how do you actually progress through that and uh, it took me a while to really figure out like how to actually play the character uh, in a way that that um, really capitalizes on the inherent uh, play style and defenses uh, that the character has uh, with certain aura set up certain builds I will have my POB listed in the description you can look at that but this is not just about the POB more important to actually pay attention to what I'm actually doing in the maps, which you'll see in a few minutes. Um, the second reason I wanted to post a video was I always like posting about what how I'm making the currency currently, and uh, um, I've watched a lot of other content people. And uh, Grim Rose, one of my favorites, I watch. He talked about uh, under Underground Sea. I checked it out. It does seem to be pretty awesome. Uh, how much actual like scourging you can do in the Underground Sea. A T16 uh, semi juiced and I actually have been doing a little bit of that I'm doing something a little different though what I don't understand uh, you know he has a headhunter and everything it's like a total joke for his character I really don't understand why he's not uh, doing high base farming he's already in T16 getting like massive amounts of quantity and magic find and stuff he's focusing on things like raw maps and uh, uniques as well scourging his maps which is, of course, I'm focused on some of those things too, especially scourging the lower tier maps is a big part of why this strategy I'm doing is good, uh, like he's doing. But, you know, he, he is farming with like influenced uh, modifiers on, like getting the conquerors on. I, he's maybe using like elder scarabs, I'm not sure. But he's not actually getting 86 plus bases because he's not using um, watchstones like this. And honest to God, I'm not sure why he's not doing that because. A lot of these bases that drop in this zone are worth, well, quite a bit. Uh, Bone Helm, especially, I mean, the top tier uh, is worth still like 50 to 70 chaos a pop, uninfluenced. And so that's part of what I'm farming. So I want to show you guys uh, what it's like to find the bases, how many bases you can expect to drop. Uh, I, I still have my loot filter set up pretty strictly, but I'm still just finding like the, the three key. The three best core defense uh, bases, Lion Pelt for Dext, Royal Burgonet for Strength, Hubris Circlet for Intelligence. You'll get to see just how many of those drop, 86 plus, uh, as well as things like Colossal Tower Shields, like 5C a piece, depending on the core armor. A lot of influence bases you can see in here. Uh, some of them don't sell easily, some of them do. Huge surprise come out well, probably one of the biggest things you could take away from this video that literally nobody is talking about uh, is utility flasks 86 plus utility flasks apparently are all worth at least like eight chaos <laughs> a piece as a base which doesn't even make sense I, I must be missing something there, there honestly must be something I don't know about crafting flask because a lot of people keep buying my flask at eight to 12 sometimes even upwards of 15 chaos a piece depending on the flask um, diamond flask for some reason selling for like 15 C a piece 
86 plus. No idea why. And uh, like Quicksilver doesn't sell as much, but uh, a lot of them just sell for, for huge, around 8 CFPs. I, I just got them priced. I get messages about them periodically. I swear if I put them at like 5 CFPs, they're going to get sold really fast. And honest to God, I have no idea why. I mean, that that's worth basically a utility flask 86 plus utility flask is worth a deception contract that's <laughs> essentially what what this is and i'll usually get like two or three utility flasks a map 86 plus uh every item that drops in my maps is 85 86 or 87 because i'm not running a misinformation i'm doing this strategy because i don't have a lot of currency take a look at my currency not very much. There really ain't much here. It's a few exalts here total. Um, so let me give you a little bit of the history on how, how I came about this strategy. I was watching some of Grimrose stuff, watching some, some other people's stuff. Obviously, that uh, played into it. But actually, at the very beginning, I was uh, I was trying to do a little bit of blight, a little bit of breach. You know, just completing my atlas, and, and it just wasn't going all that well. Uh, I was trying to, uh, I've spent a lot of my currency that I've gotten um, on building a character, which, you know, I, my, I got a pretty like decently geared uh, Toxic Rain Raider. I'm not making this video to really talk about that. You can check out the POV if you want to see the gear. Um, I don't have like, you know, I, I don't have like Chaos Multi plus skill gem level. I got like kind of a crappy rolled somewhat high tier belt or i mean um bow i got a nice carcass jack but it's not like it's double influence with a good corruption or whatever uh helm's nothing special really it's like a 20 chaos helm a series step uncorrupted entirely uh a sigian vice with great suffixes not their very good prefixes the gloves that don't even have chaos multi <laughs> i mean uh, yeah, like, my gear is nothing super amazing. Like, anyone at this point can have this kind of gear, probably. And I'm only level 92. But, uh, you know, I took the build that I saw off uh, Big Ducks. Off of uh, Remy, his updated profile. Took a look at Zazarians and Lighties, Champion uh, thing. And I decided I wanted to make a Raider. I'd go this route. Uh, my exact build is not a match, perfect match with anyone's build. I switched things around. I did get uh, the major clusters over here. This is a good decision. I highly recommend uh, getting these big clusters up here. And yeah, max frenzy charges. Get a little bit up here. I think is a good idea. This is a little bit questionable because it's you know, a lot of points down there. Not going down this route. Trying to get a little bit over here. Uh, I plan to finish the tree off with a couple points here uh, and maybe up here. Kind of like how Big Ducks had his set up a little bit. I kind of liked it. I mulled over it for a long time, a few hours there, really thinking about how I want it. Once I hit about uh, level 90, I was like, okay, what do I want my actual build to be? And then, you know, kind of took it from there. But anyway, enough about the build, enough about the gear. Uh, it's hard to survive these maps, man. Like, if you don't have a headhunter and you're trying to go deep in a T18 underground C, even T16 is hard enough. T18, uh, it's hard to survive, and this is a strategy not for the faint of heart. This is a, I got six portals, I'm going to use six portals <laughs> kind of build. Uh, and I'm planning to die a few times, uh, shifting in and out of the nightmare, just instantly dead. No, that's going to happen a few times. Um, kind of rolled the maps fairly safe. I did uh, strip off any kind of minus all res. Uh, vulnerability absolutely didn't keep that uh, crit I, I have a couple here that I think still have crit but you know the really nasty ones I rolled off toxic rain is great you don't really have to roll off anything you know if you have a headhunter if if you're not farming like super juice stuff and I, I do like the build I definitely think it's good the build is actually incredible for the league mechanic and something I'm gonna show about because unlike burning arrow elementalist and so many other builds you can prep the transition in and out of Scourge League by carpet bombing the whole uh, map. Like, just do this, and then shift, and boom. Just like, literally everything just blows up right there. Uh, that's actually incredibly <laughs> overpowered. 
And yeah, and when I transition to Scourge, any monsters that were near me are basically instantly dead. And even the ones that are kind of around me are also dead. And it's the ones that come at me from like 100 miles an hour off the screen, you know, will kill me still. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you'll see how I kind of get around that a little bit. So I'm doing super like low, semi-juicing, nothing major. Uh, polished scarabs. Scarab 2 C a piece, 3 C a piece, 3 C a piece is nothing. Maps are like 5 C a piece, but I have them. I have them double, double favorited. I don't even have 3 slots unlocked. Uh, yeah, and so I just, you know, I take the maps I got. I plan to do 12 maps because I have 12 goes at these watchstones. I got a completely uninfluenced atlas, so there will be a new influence that pops up on here. And that is going to help juice the maps some. It's going to make them harder too. Elder and just elder influence actually does ma make the map quite a bit harder. There are some elder monsters that really just wreck my face outside the scourge realm. <laughs> so that's uh, that's rough. But uh, yeah, I want to show you guys in here. We're gonna go into this map. I already pre-rolled these awakened sections. I actually hit a nemesis three on one of my uh, Chayula ones and set it to the side. I'll use it for another day. And uh, oh, actually, I gotta. I goofed up and forgot to re-up this one. <laughs> Sacred Grove. <laughs> what? Okay. I actually don't want to even have that right now. I don't want to use it because... <sighs> okay. I also rolled uh, Breaches and I wanted to save that, but I, I'm not in the mood to do Sacred Grove right now. I mean, obviously I'm happy that I rolled it, but it's not what I want to see uh, right now. I just want random generic uh, things. But that that's why you should use Awakened Sections because I, I just trying to roll four Watchstones. I hit Nemesis 3 and a Sacred Grove in like out of six tries randomly. Um, now I haven't hit anything good like that in quite some time but that's what happens when you actually use uh, Awakened Sections. So use Awakened Sections guys. <laughs> you just do it because you know, and get multiple watchstones. You can set them to the side if you're not ready to do some, you know, if you're not ready for Nemesis 3, set it to the side and then come back and do it later. So here, here we go. We got, uh, oh, I get rid of this. Um, might lag a little bit with uh, X split open things. I got, uh, oh, almost forgot. I do actually plan to have a dump tab uh, in this tab and I have excellence in the background going to uh, reset it excellence is not very accurate with bases um, what am I target farming I'm target farming a lot of things honestly like just raw maps uh, 86 plus bases whether it's utility flasks or influenced items or uh, just like the specialized zone specific items uh, bone helmets drop in here, 50 to 70 C a piece. Fugitive boots drop in here, around 20 C a piece. Steel rings, around 5 to 10 C a piece. Uh, fingerless gloves, 5 to 10 C a piece. You know, a lot of a lot of good ones, fairly good ones drop in here. And yeah, you guys are gonna see how much I make. I will have to go in and kind of edit this, uh, the breakdown of what I make manually because excellence is not give an accurate representation I have I think I have it set up so it could or should but it just doesn't give an accurate representation of the kind of uh, loot you're getting I was farming strategy because I was doing um, the lab runs great opportunity to do lab runs a lot of money to be made in that I made some decent money with some enchanted bases I was buying the bases first and then I was like why am I buying the bases I should just farm them i used to farm them back in ultimatum it's easy enough and i go in and 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 do some more research and i find that these bases particularly like five days ago especially maybe a little less now but especially like five days ago the bases are incredibly lucrative uh super lucrative. like a perfect colossus tower shield 86 plus it's like 40 50 c man perfect val regalia 10 c or so most of the really perfect roll things aren't worth a ton. But like if, if you want to just pick up every 86 plus Burgonet, Lion Pelt, Hubris, those are all worth 1 to 2 C guaranteed. So if you're someone who's kind of on the low end of the currency you have right now and you're really just trying to get a little something and you have a character that you have geared up somewhat decently, I, I do, you know, 2, 
to maybe 3 million DPS at the most, depending on how you set up the POB. We'll see when I actually set it up and I post it. I could be doing half of this. I was doing this back when I had a quill rain with 5 socket. I was still doing this. Th that's what I was doing in the beginning. And then I started selling some things pretty quickly, and... There you go. Uh, so, snapshots done, history done, reset. Okay, we are on the road. Do breach. This is going to actually have too many breaches in here. Now, I have Chayula breach blockstones in here. I'm not focusing on Chayula. That's not at all what I'm focusing on. Just focusing on uh, the bases, really, and the raw maps. And not dying. <laughs> that's that's the big thing. Uh, first game of the night, so it's gonna be a little laggy. Really, it, it's the elder mobs, mobs like the ones over there, the ones that are firing their arcane business at my face. That's uh, that's what's so dangerous. This strategy will really keep you on your toes. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna carpet bomb the whole area. And then I put my Defiance banner down. And I go right back out before the uh, Mortal King has much time to wear off. Oh, I got a good iron ring there. Huh. Show you again. I'm running Malevolence, Grace, uh, Defiance, Banner, and uh, Flesh and Stone. Quite defensive. I'm running uh, a Granite Flask and a Jade Flask. Uh, my... Long story short, my uh, atlas, sorry, not my atlas, but my um, is a lion pelt and a flask, utility flask that will sell for around 8C. Lion pelt would probably sell for a couple C, but I'm not buying, I'm not picking up things that only sell for a couple C at this point. I'm going to wait for a mortal call. Boom, there it is. And everything just freaking dies. Including me, if I'm not being extremely on my toes <laughs> don't worry you're, you're gonna see me die randomly and have no idea why it happened like right here it could happen very easily I had really nowhere to run okay uh, elder influence boots can sometimes be good I don't know. that looks like death waiting for me so I'm running a Carcass Jack, which is improving my uh, AoE a lot. I, I think it's it's a great synergy with a lot of different aspects of this uh, strat, like putting the Defiance banner down and it covering literally my entire screen, uh, making every monster around me deal 15% less damage, I think it was. Which is pretty dope. Uh, as well as the armor, and you know, it's certainly just in general, the armor and all that is good for me too. Uh, I don't think that wand is worth anything. Seeing some perfect 86 bases that aren't really worth anything, but you know we're gonna see a lot of stuff, so that's all right. If you watch Grimo's video, you know it's actually honestly pretty similar to what he's doing. Of course, I do it way slower because I don't have a mega geared character with a headhunter, and I'm doing two tiers higher than he is think he ought to be doing higher tiers, but that's who am I to judge. Wow, I got lucky. Just stand there and take it. Oh, I think I just hit... Got my backup gems. Hitting there. By the way, my goal is to try and, like, actually get through this relatively oh god it's so dangerous what i saw there relatively quickly and not it's not about like getting a hundred it's not about getting 300 stacks right like let's, it's not about that waiting for my mortal call i have mortal call and left click my left it also you know something really important i am going to point this out so i have a mortal call anomalous mortal call here Connected to an efficacy support and increased duration support. The biggest thing I took away from Remy's uh, strategy on it. I, I think this is actually brilliant. And, and it, it, you can maximize, you truly exploit this by 
making it so that when you're in the Scourge Realm, Immortal Call is up 100% of the time when you're in the Scourge Realm. Okay, I should probably pay attention because I'm just going to die. <laughs> oh yeah, I also got uh, Val Haste set up that way, so just, just, just terrific synergy there. Getting an extra Val Haste uh, running. So cool. It's such an awesome four link. I, I can't even think of a better possible four link, really, uh, than that. Now, the Val Haste doesn't have huge imp. Honestly, she's probably be running Val's Grace in here, but uh, anyway, it's still cool, like having Val Haste. It's a, a perfect Titan Gauntlet. So probably not worth it. Probably should have died there. Okay, perfect lion's uh, pelt there. Which absolutely will sell for a few chaos. And I will pick that up. Let me talk about why why this strategy is good. So, you know, again, I keep talking about Grimrow. A lot of inspiration came from him. You know, you're getting raw maps, you're getting influence bases, uh, and you can sell those things. But you're not getting 86 plus bases from him, which you are from my strat, which is why I think it's a little bit superior and why I'm making a video about this. Uh, you can sell those bases, you can sell Bone Helms for 60, 50, 60 chaos a pop easily. Uh, you can sell Fugitive Boots 15, 20 chaos a pop, no problem. Uh, and you can also turn around and run labs yourself. Not like some crazy lab service guy who's using TFT and everything. Just do it and enchant some of the bases you found. Enchant some of the bases you found. And then sell them, you know, completely, like, set up with the base and everything. If you have an 86 Bone Helm enchanted with a good <laughs> enchantment with a build, I mean, my god, you that's like a 7x base or something like that. So... Yeah, absolutely. Should totally do that. I can't even do all of uh, breaches because the character's just not strong enough. I don't have the proliferation. I can't kill the rares in here quickly enough. I can't kill bosses quickly enough. Uh, that just is what it is. It's okay, as you can see. Like, there's a rare. It takes a while to die. <laughs> but it gives me a ton of extra uh, loot, of course. So, you know, that's nice. Gives me a lot of extra Scourge. And so, again, two reasons to run this. Both involving the bases. Sell the bases or enchant the bases and then sell the bases. The third reason to run this is to, uh, you know, Scourge the shit out of your maps, you know. Uh, here we go. This is the big money right here. That's an 86 Bone Helm. I just made half an Exalt off of that first map. Now, Bone Helms don't drop like candy. They, they are actually pretty rare. Uh, they're not super rare though. I would expect to find a bone helm. I don't know, like once every couple of maps, once every two or three maps, probably. If I'm doing pretty good, definitely not going to see it all the time. But it is the big money, like just in terms of uninfluenced faces. There's none better than that that can drop in here. The only thing that could even challenge that is a perfect Colossus Tower Shield 86 can come close to the value, but it's, yeah, it's just not the same. My Atlas passives, if you couldn't tell, are Breach and Heist as well. I'm running the Cartographer uh, setup because I want to get some extra Heist contracts. Of course, I'm not even sure if I got any Heist contracts yet, <laughs> actually. But, uh, it's actually a freaking miracle that I haven't died yet. But I have been doing this strat long enough to figure out, you know, I just want you guys to pay close attention to exactly how I'm maneuvering my character because most people with the gear I have and in, in this kind of map, this kind of juice, would, would just be rolling over dead. Uh, so it, it, the, the way I'm able to st stay alive has a great deal of, has a great deal to do with how I'm actually managing my uh, character. Which feels good. Like it feels good to actually be able to play the game in a way that is somewhat higher skill cap. And you know what I do outside this, the scourge realm 
usually doesn't kill me, and sometimes it can. Uh, these Elder Influence monsters in particular can. But I'm up to almost 200 stacks now. The map is almost done, but I still haven't died. Uh, Colossus Tower Shield here, if it's not really high base armor, I, I just forget about it. It's got to be near 600 for me to pick it up. You can pick up these 86 plus turquoise amulets if you wanted. It's not really worth it to me to do that. Uh, but you can if you want. I'm, I'm actually a little confused on where I haven't been yet. Okay, there's some stuff up here I hadn't cleared. Anyway, don't want to spend too much time up there. It's not about trying to get 300 stacks. I don't have enough juice into this map to get 300 stacks. <laughs> so, there's that. Oh, that could be bad. No, I'm still alive. Woo! Honestly, guys, this is like the first time I've ever run a map where I may actually survive this entire map without dying. It. Probably not, but... So this... I should have double-checked the map mods and tried to replicate this, because... No, I, I only have uh, temporal chains as a curse. Nightmare bassinet. Okay, perfect nightmare bassinet. It's the first one of those I've ever seen, actually. Uh, I have to check that. <laughs> okay, and then literally another one duplicated. There. More battle regalias. I think I only got... So I got 225 stacks. There might be something right here, maybe. Yeah, there was. Ah, oh, there's, there's some stuff up here. I plan to die right here. It would be unbelievable if I <laughs> still... I should... Honestly, I should have died there. Just running towards Scourge Monsters. <laughs> At 230 stacks with my gear. I mean, it's just... I only have 4,500 health, by the way. Yeah, that's it. I'm not up to that just yet. So there you go. I mean, first map done. I didn't even have to turn back and, and, and check the gear. Uh, we'll see what Bone Helms are at currently at this very second. It looks like ooh, they've gone up 0.7 exalts, 78 chaos is the lowest one. Uh, then it's 85 chaos and 90 chaos, and then a few of them at 100 chaos. So this, uh, these are actually climbing in value right now. Uh, they were fluctuating a bit, a little up and down. I thought they were pretty stable at around 50 to 70 chaos, but now they have appeared to have gone up even higher. And that means I'll be putting it in for one exalt. <laughs> If it's going to be like that. Um, or I might try to sell it, depending. Who knows. Uh, these Nightmare Bassinets were only 85, unfortunately. So they are going to be junk. Either way. Okay, folks. We're back with the results from doing Undersea with uh, T18. And farming up some bases. Farming up some maps. Farming up all kinds of stuff. And you can see the giant tab right here is the results. I, I did actually go in and kind of organize it. So it's, it's quite easy, pleasing to the eyes <laughs> to see, unlike in many cases. Uh, I did this because I cannot rely entirely on the excellence program to calculate the value of all of these. And it's just because it doesn't really calculate the bases at all. 
But let me go through it and uh, kind of share with you guys. This is the second half of the video. This part is primarily uh, about um, just kind of seeing the X per hour, what kind of results you're getting from that. And I do want to preface this by saying um, this is not entirely just about how much you, currency you're making just in terms of like the items you find. Um, this strategy, there's all kinds of synergies about this strategy, what makes it good. Uh, you would, you would already be farming T16 under C, perhaps, uh, just for scourging your maps. So you go up to T18, you get a lot more bases that way. Uh, you, you get the bases, you can sell the bases, and uh, also, if you're someone who likes running lab, sort of leisurely, like me, I actually do like running lab sometimes. I don't like running it like a job, but I do like running it uh, just for fun now and then. I like running it especially in this situation where like maybe my boots aren't enchanted right they are now uh, maybe my helm I don't have a helm enchant uh, that is applicable to my character which is actually the case right now it's another good incentive to run it this helmet's not good enough to warrant me uh, paying for a service to get it enchanted so I gotta do it myself and uh, if I'm gonna do it myself I might as well also be trying to make money off of the bases uh, that I have, which either I have to go out and buy for, you know, price, uh, 5C a, P, a 5C a pop for bases like uh, this, or I can just farm them easily. And whereas these are kind of hard to sell, a little bit hard to sell, they're not hard to farm, and th they're kind of annoying to sell and to buy <laughs> a little bit. Like the, these lower, these lower class bases, 86 plus right here so i'm gonna be able to i have i have tons of them now and i can com super conveniently just go in and like enchant them and stuff and i am going to make a video out right after this uh that's going to showcase kind of how i do the lab runs uh, how you can do it uh low investment no gift of the goddess <laughs> i don't want to use gift of the goddess because of the crashes if anything uh so but but anyway yeah just it's gonna be fun. It's gonna it's a, it's a great segue. You know, it's, it's, you want to do a variety of different farming. The one thing leads to the next. You know, this farm leads to the uh, enchanting bases from the lab runs. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's take a look here. Uh, excellence. Uh, I am gonna actually uh, go to the second scene here, so you get to see. By the way, it's the uh, morning after. It's one wearing a different shirt. Uh, I was sleepy by the end of the. <laughs> the first half of this video uh 372 chaos in here and that is just from basically everything from here left which is all the currencies all the maps all the contracts the splinters the shards and all that stuff uh excellence can calculate that stuff pretty well what it cannot calculate is everything from the flasks to the right all the bases uh, virtually every single one of these bases is 86 plus a lot of them are influenced and it, it just has no way of calculating them apparently which is a little surprising but uh, I, I researched tried to set my excellence program up so it could do that but I either didn't figure it out or it simply does not uh, actually one second here might have had the wrong map tab in there no okay we're good uh, so yeah, 372C, that's about three exalts worth. Um, if you by chance saw the, you can watch the whole video on this uh, from the Twitch channel I have linked below. Uh, this was almost exactly a three hour farm, 12 maps in three hours. That is essentially 15 minutes per map. Uh, not terrible, considering I'm doing like 250-ish stacks of Scourge. Uh, it does take a while to do the whole map if you don't have incredible gear like with a headhunter and all that uh, so uh, I wrote some things down in here as I went through and calculated tabulated all of this so the currency there is 373 C the flasks I sell them for 8 to 10 C a pop I'm a little patient with them I went ahead and considered these 5 C a pop now people aren't constantly trying to buy them but the supply on the market is actually quite low I don't think people really realize that these are worth something. So, uh, I put five chaos apiece for the flask. I think that's generous enough. 
uh, items one is this category of items here these are all worth roughly uh, 10 or, sorry uh, five C a piece so if I go in here and I check uh, Colossus tower shields uh, you see a lot of three and four but these are actually worth more because these are only like 90 ish percentile so I gotta go in here and I click like 90 ish percentile and suddenly it's more like five ten maybe two, there's really not very many but I calculated these as five for someone who is too cheap to buy a 100 percentile <laughs> 86 plus base but they, they they don't mind you know losing a few points of armor they'll search for 80 to 90 percent plus uh, I can find that uh, these are all perfect hubris circlets. Oh, actually, that one doesn't belong. They're here, like, uh, I don't know, like 86 plus hubris circlet. You can go in here. Uh, you can see they're around 3C, but if I go in and I put the 100th percentile in there, then you're looking at 4, 5C a pop. Uh, yeah, some of the, you've got some... 86 plus Conjure gloves influence cultist vestment. The point is all of this is around 5c a piece Now granted a lot of this stuff not super easy to sell unlike most of my farming videos This is usually based more on currency. These take some patience to sell. They absolutely do But they truly are worth something uh, Then we get over to this category. This is kind of the uh, the second tier Around 10 C a piece. Yeah, so the fingerless gloves, all here. Uh, you know, this Val, you know, if I go in here and I check this uh, sort of random high armor uh, amulet, I say, okay, it says 20 C, there's just not very many of them on there. Low demand, low supply. Uh, they're actually kind of higher, but I have to, you know, it's hard to sell some of these items. This uh, ancient Greaves here, I actually sold an exact uh, var variation of this for. 30c like while i was prepping this look it says 3 8 13 c those aren't actually people selling them i had i had one up for 30c and sold it like one hour ago so <laughs> there's that uh valor galleys i've been selling for uh 12c sold a couple earlier this morning uh you know if you just check at a glance you see oh it's only one to two c well you gotta go in and you gotta See, 86 is there. When you check the 100th percentile on the base, suddenly these numbers are more accurate representation. You 10, 10, 10, 15, 20, 20, 21, 30. That's much more accurate. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. This bow may or may not sell. Axe may or may not sell. One ring can be a little hard to sell. But anyway, averaged out. 10c a piece there then we get to the third tier this was all like 210 uh, this is this is this tier is around 20c a piece fugitive boots I've been selling pretty reliably at between 20 and 30c a piece you can see there I think these are actually going up in value uh, I plan to put these up for more like 30 to 40 I, I really think they're going up in value people are starting to buy a lot more of these unfortunately I feel like the evasion rating energy shield base is the, is the cheapest least sought after combination base uh, i think people are going to go for the two tones a little bit more but if they need the chaos res they might take this we got uh, hunter influenced uh top tier evasion energy shield chest it's still with something energy shield yeah i really got the energy shield <laughs> evasion bases here don't i uh, evasion base this is uh, assassin's garb 86 plus you know all around 20 then uh, we got to three three big items three big ticket items I got the biggest one right here this is an 86 uh, Royal Burgonet yeah, cheapest one one exalt that's posted up 56 minutes ago I, this is under value honestly it's under value uh, an hour ago, I checked there were two listed on there, and they were probably sold already. I think this is honestly worth but somewhere between one and two exalts. Probably set it up for about two exalts, and if you're patient, it'll sell. Uh, it, they're very hard to come by. Uh, so, yeah. 
the very first map you saw, I got a bone helmet, and it was the only one <laughs> I got in 12, uh, 12 maps. Actually, quite depressing that uh, I only got one. Um, as far as I know, I don't think there's any significant difference in drop rate between bone helmet and fugitive boots, or between bone helmets and fingerless gloves. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think there's a big difference. I I've done farming sessions where I found more bone helmets and boots, or I found more bone helmets and gloves. It is what it is. Unfortunately, I only found the one. But if we go in and we check, uh, during my farming session, when I checked, uh, it was like minimum 90 chaos. But now the price is, uh, is changed a little bit, back to the 50 to 70 range, which I thought. So, you know, half an exalt for sure. Okay, and then we got this. I got one, if you see on here, this is a perfect base, uh, Colossus Tower 86. And if we go in, and we check it, just an 86 Colossus Tower Shield, random base, not worth that much. You know, it, that's why these are over here. These are like top 80, 90 percentile. But again, I already showed you, if you get top 80, 90 percentile, it's suddenly worth like 10 or so. And if you check literally 100%, you're going to see a different number completely. Cheapest one, 39 chaos, 40 chaos, 45, 55, 70, 100. There's not very many up here. You could probably sell this for at least half an exalt. At least, if you wanted to. But ironically, if you put this up for 30 chaos right now, it wouldn't sell immediately because there's, there's just not that many people buying them. You know, They're not constantly buying them and constantly selling them. These bases, you have to have some patience, you know, and actually, uh, but, but anyway, I, I priced them to, in my opinion, about 90, 80 to 90% market value, I feel, but it, but it is kind of hard to judge in the market. You, you, the nice thing about doing this strategy is you be, really begin to familiarize yourself with the market, uh, these sort of fluctuations in uh, prices of the bases and you begin to understand and you get a, you get a more well-rounded understanding of what the meta is what people are running so i know that like uh builds armor life based builds with shields are still popular this season i don't know if it's spectral shield throw but i do know that uh sort of like big armor builds where your armor stacking up things and uh with a shield is is super like like i know that you know if you wanted to make this shield good you'd get like super clutch uh, defensive rolls on the prefixes so I know that uh, those kind of builds are still popular this season because uh, they, they sell for a lot uh, so yeah that's the story basically and if you see here uh, total is 1193 chaos that's roughly three and a half exalts I mean uh, th yeah, three and a half exalts uh, per hour uh, since three hours not the greatest not not all that great really if you're looking at it exclusively as, oh, how much money did I make? Well, a lot of the stuff is kind of hard to sell. And three to four exalts per hour is decent this season. Um, it is harder to make currency and to, to make, you know, we were having to settle for making a little less currency than usual uh, because of the nature of the league mechanic and how so few people are able to capitalize massively on it currently. Um, Anyone who's casual is not making much currency, does not have much currency to spend. And this strategy I did, I wouldn't necessarily say it's geared toward casual players. But again, look at my gear. It's not, Hello. it's nothing super fancy. Uh, a casual player could have the gear I have. A casual player could be playing Toxic Rain. And I already showcased in the first half of this video how you play... Uh, the Scourge Realm, so that you're able to maximize um, juicing up your Scourge maps in a T18, farm some bases, and actually survive a decent amount. You didn't actually see me die in this video, but if you want to see the plentiful number of deaths, you can uh, watch the full <laughs> video, uh, and, and you'll see some deaths in there. You'll see some, like, WTF deaths just out of nowhere. Um, I was very lucky that first map I ran. To not die at all. I, I die on average two to three times a map. Maybe two to three times. Usually towards the end as the uh, 
stacks of Scourge go up, start ramping up around 200, 250. But yeah, T18, 200 to 300, or 200 to 250 stacks of Scourge. You get a ton of bases. You get a lot of uniques. I didn't talk about uniques. I didn't get any big uniques except maybe this uh, Lehup. That guy is kind of big, but I didn't get any you know, void batteries or anything crazy. Uh, I didn't get a ton of currency. I did get one Exalted Orb. Raw drop. It did come from the Scourge Realm. Uh, when I had like 200% magic find. Or 400% magic find, I guess. So that was... It, it's not... It's not that, that is one of the other side effects of doing Scourge mechanics. You get just monstrous magic find. So, you know, the monster drops X currency. It has a much greater than average chance of being an Exalted Orb. Because it's... You know, you just magic find is through the roof. Uh, and so I, I'm looking forward to doing Nemesis 3 like that, actually, of course, which I'll be doing pretty soon. But the next video will be, um, you know, sort of part two of this farming uh, strategy, so to speak, which will be taking many of the bases I got. You know, I'm going to I'm going to take this bone helm here. Right, I'm going to take this bone helm. And I'm going to put it right here. And this is my little tab for, obviously I'm collecting some breach rings, but this is my little tab for bases that I plan to use. There's only an 83, 84 <laughs> Blizzard Crown is too expensive. Uh, yeah, so I'm almost ready to, to do a little bit of crafting there. And also, actually, I wanted to switch this out. This was a uh, Valve Galia I was messing with, but that is not perfect. So I found a perfect Valve Galia. So when I find a defensive reforge harvest, I'm going to use it on this perfect one now. I have a better, uh, get better stats. Got my Scourge maps down there. So, uh, yeah, that's all for this video. You know, if you want to, oh, if you want to see more, you know, very soon, check out the, uh, the next video, which will be, again, farming the, uh, ascend uh lab, which is actually kind of fun. What? Lab is an interesting thing. A lot of people really hate lab. It's annoying because you farm it. If, if you just do like one or two lab runs, it's super annoying because you get dead ends all the time. You go the wrong way. You don't know where to go. But if you farm the same map, which does only changes like once a day, and you farm it, you become super familiarized with the layout. And a character like this, Toxic Rain Raider, I mean, like five minutes lab runs. You're just in and out. Five minutes. Uber lab runs. Super easy, super quick, and actually kind of fun because it's so fast. Uh, but once you memorize the layout, <laughs> of course, so it just takes a little bit of time. You know, get, give it a little bit of a chance. You know, you'll try it out. So I'm going to clean up my tabs here. I'm going to get ready to do that, and I'm going to stream that. So, uh, you know, hopefully you like, like the video. Either uh, you got value out of figuring out how to sort of maneuver your Toxic Rain character around to survive um, these high red tier maps deep in the Scourge realms or you get some value out of um, just taking a look at another currency making strategy that's not bad that sort of while it on its face is not great it essentially like triple dips in what you're doing because you're farming bases to sell you're farming bases to enchant and you're farming uh you're farming uh scourge your scourge crucible I'm getting tons of it there incidentally i'll end this video with an embarrassing note <laughs> If you watched that first map, you notice that my uh, Scourge maps were something like Tier 8 or Tier 9. And uh, I, I think I capped it out on like the second or third map. Basically, you get a transformation like once per map. I did 12 maps and I capped mine at like map number 2 or 3. And I totally forgot <laughs> to replace them in. So <laughs> don't forget to replace your map when you tap it out at, at Tier 10. Don't forget to put the new maps in so you keep going. <laughs> Don't be like me. But anyway, if you do things right, you know, it, it's all it all works together really nicely. So thanks for watching the video and uh, stay tuned for the next.